Hey everybody, I'm Sean. Welcome to another episode of Angling Spiders. Welcome back everybody. I am back on the ice today out here fishing with my wife in southern Alberta. It is an absolutely beautiful day out here. It's about 7-8 degrees which is in the 40s Fahrenheit. Uh, it's melting, there is no wind and so it's beautiful just to be out here. Uh, we're probably not even going to need the tent. It's so nice out here and uh, looking to get on to some pike. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Also, I forgot to mention in the opener for season five that I'm going to be doing a pike tally this year just for myself for all the pike that I catch. And whenever I catch one, I'm going to put the tally up in the corner so that you know how many pike I've caught. I have a goal this year to catch 100 pike. Uh, which is not actually that easy to do because they're relatively solitary um, and so you're not going to catch them in schools and so we'll see how long it takes me if I can get to that mark to get to that 100 pike. I already have one but I did not put it out in a video, at least not in a long format video. It was in the short that I released recently because it was the only fish that I caught that day. So I got one there, we'll see if we get any more today. So we're already set up, we got our holes drilled and uh, let's get to it. Missed it. Just a second. Oh, I missed it. He got my bait. Okay. Not even done setting up, everybody. And uh, we had a flag go off. It got my bait, but uh, good sign. That was the first tip up I got set up. I'm just setting up the th three other ones. Flag went off. Missed the fish. But let's go back and get him. All right, you guys. I finally got one here in the tent. Oh, I think I just lost it. He just let go. Oh, he had him on too. That's the best hit we've had all day. Oh, frustrating. All right, you guys, you can see how nice it is out here today. Uh, a little bit too nice. The uh, ice is starting to flood because it's melting and uh, not great for ice conditions. So hopefully it actually cools off a little bit soon or we'll be losing some of our thickness. The ice is still really thick out here. It's about uh, 22 inches, but a few days like this and it'll start eating it away pretty good. So, and it softens up pretty fast too. As always, taking the tent down. Oh, that's a keeper. That's a nice one. That's a nice fish. <laughs> of course. End of the day. We had I think nine flags go off. I lost a couple in the tent. And of course I get this one at the end of the day. Okay everybody, so we got this one in the live well and it's splashing around a little bit here. I'm gonna get a measurement. Um, this happens to be one of the lakes where you can keep fish. But in order to keep them, they have to be over 63 centimeters. And so we'll see if this one meets the bill. If it does, then uh, we're probably going to keep this one. So let's have a look. It's pretty close. But I don't know if it's big enough. Oh yeah. That fish is... Uh, 67 centimeters or 26 inches so that's a keeper okay everybody it is the end of the day here uh, just the one fish as you saw and uh, the one that I lost right at the hole we had flags going off all over the place this morning unfortunately it went really really quiet for about three hours I think we had eight flags go off right away as soon as we got here and I missed all of them then I had that one in the tent and uh, got it right to the hole and lost it. It was a small one anyway, wouldn't have been able to keep it. And then finally, the one keeper that we got here right at the end of the day as we were packing up. Um, we are gonna take that one home because the keep limit here is uh, over 63 centimeters. You can keep three fish. And since my wife and I both have licenses, we could have kept six. Uh, only the one, but that's fine. We're gonna take that one home so that we have a snack, uh, which we don't get to do that often. I'm not gonna end the video here because I am going to show you next what I do to prepare those pike to taste a lot better. So I'll see you guys back in the kitchen. 
All right, everybody, I am back in the kitchen and I'm gonna show you guys what I do to prepare these fish fillets before we fry and eat them. Uh, what I'm not gonna show you is how I fillet them or how I debone them. There are plenty of videos out there on YouTube on how to debone a pike. What I will say is it's very important you do it because there is a series of bones that run the length of the fillet called Y bones. And if you don't get rid of them, you're gonna have a ton of bones in that meat. So. There's a couple of different methods out there. Uh, I've seen some where people actually do it while they're filleting and do five cuts and remove all the bones that way. I actually remove the entire fillet and then debone it afterwards. Again, you can look it up and see which method you would prefer to try. But either way, once you get used to doing it, it's actually pretty easy to remove those bones. So what I'm gonna show you is what step I take next because some people complain about the taste of pike and I'm telling you that we love it. So. What do we do to get ready before we fry it up? I'll show you. So these are the pieces of fish that I have after the deboning process. And because I removed that Y bone from the middle, you end up with strips of meat. This is why usually for us, we use pike meat for fish tacos. It's because you've already got these chunks. So the first process that I do after getting the bones out and getting the fillets cleaned, I've run these under tap water for a little bit, is just to soak them a little bit. This is just, again, to make sure that you've got all the blood out of there, that uh, if there was any fish slime left from the skin that was on there, that you're giving it a good rinse. Um, as soon as I've rinsed it really well, check to see if there's any bones that I've missed, and, and I've already done that. Then what I'm going to do is rinse them one more time, and then I'm going to give it one final step before we cook them. Okay, so I've rinsed these fillets one more time, put them into a clean bowl, they are clean now, they are, you could fry them right now and many people do. So what's the secret step that we do? Um, that is to take this bowl of fish and add some salt. And what we do is put a pretty good amount of salt in there, into the water with the fish. Then we stir it around a little bit. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna draw out any of the remaining fluid that's left in those fillets. Um, if there's some blood in there, um, it's just going to draw it out into the water. And so what you're going to do is if you now put this into the fridge and let it sit for a while, sometimes we let it sit for a couple of hours, covered in the fridge with that salt water in there, this is going to change the taste of that pike. So if you're somebody who doesn't like the taste of pike, give this a try. Because I can tell you, if I put this in the fridge now for an hour, and then I rinse it off and fry it, you're not ever going to recognize that this was even a freshwater fish. It has no fishy flavor. That smell of pike's going to be gone. It's going to harden it up a little bit, firms the, the meat up just a little bit more, and it's going to be good. Uh, and so... I'm going to chuck this in the fridge, I'm going to let it sit for an hour, and then we're going to fry this up. All right, everybody, so I hope you can hear that frying. And it is almost done. I've already tasted it. It's amazing. So. If you don't like the taste of pike and you've never tried it this way, give it a try because no fishy taste, no pike taste, really good. Now it's time to eat. I'm going to close it out there. Once again, thanks everybody for uh, tagging along. And as always, if you like the video, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Till next time, good fishing. I've already tasted it. It's unreal. So, three, two, one.